Thank you everyone. Thank you also to Katrina for that lovely introduction and acknowledgement of country, of course. <laughs> um, so you're joining us today and um, we have actually had a couple of opportunities now to talk through our slides. So one of the things that I wanted to just flag up front is that because this is an Indigenous-led project and we're also working with Indigenous students or First Nations students to help understand their experiences here at CDU. Uh, we are relying as well on the knowledge and experience of an advisory group. So we have an established advisory group within the Northern Institute that we've also presented our work to. And um, most recently, Gazelle presented this project at a national conference at the AARE conference and um, has reported that it was received well. So thank you for joining us today. Um, we also understand that it's currently um, the VC's uh, closing, wind down, end of year address for CDU and so many people have given apologies to attend that. So you may be just watching this as the recording. Um, either way, we thank you very much for your interest. So can we please go to the first slide? Yeah, so um, Katrina has done the acknowledgement of country for us and I would also like to acknowledge um, the traditional lands that we're on today or that we're presenting from today. So this is our lovely research team and um, it's actually a very uh, experienced um, team of researchers and lecturers and we also come with um, the experience of being students ourselves. So, um, so my experience, of course, as a First Nations student and specifically here at CDU. So I have that background as well leading into um, the study in this project. So why this study? So this project is the first investigation of the engagement of undergraduate First Nations students. In higher ed, um, we're looking at appropriate and positive engagement of First Nations students in regional settings. So um, in an earlier literature review, we found that most of the investigations for engagement for First Nations student, students was actually carried out in southern states. So. Um, you know, some of the larger universities, New South Wales, Victoria, uh, South Australia, down that way was more um, likely where articles had been written and where research had been done. So we thought this was an ideal opportunity for us to have our voice and for us to um, investigate, um, explore and then um, discuss what kind of experiences First Nations students have here at CDU. And the best bit about our project is that we're aiming to then deliver mutually informed uh, lessons for CDU staff and First Nations students about um, successful engagement. So those are the aims of our project. So talking specifically about experiences and not just students undertaking study, but going through to completion. Um, much of the research indicates that First Nations students are still most, um, the group most likely thinking about leaving before completion of study, even if they've experienced a higher level of engagement. So there's something else happening there. And, um, for us to explore whether that's actually the case here at CDU as well is um, an important addition to the knowledge in that space. So we're hoping to produce a good practice guide to assist lecturers and the institution to support our First Nations students to undertake and complete their studies. 
So this is the time frame. So we're hoping that we'll be finished by 2025. And we have um, quite a detailed plan of how we're going to go about that. So in this first um, year, not quite a year, we've implemented our, our survey for First Nations students. Our next step will be to actually speak to lecturers and professional staff that have been um, pro uh, proposed by those students as someone who has supported them and positively helped them engage with their studies here at CDU. Uh, we have a website that you can access to find out some more information if you would like to. On that website is a little bit more detail about who we are, our experience and um, our authority in this space. And also uh, gives you a few more details about the advisory group who are working with us on the project as well. So the data snapshot. Now my colleague, Dr. Golubiaska, to put it slowly, Kate, who's unfortunately unwell, um, has put together this initial uh, look at the data for us to um, discuss. I'm not going to do it as well as Kate, and hopefully if you have any questions, she'll be able to answer those um, at a later date. But basically we were looking at the age and gender splits and the number of male students differ less across age groups than among women. So it's mostly women who are studying, less men. Older male students represent one third share in each of the age groups because fewer older females study, which is interesting. So there's a difference between the level of engagement, but also the age at which men and women are accessing higher education. There's also a difference in students um, who are from accessing from remote or regional locations or major cities. So for CDU, mostly remote and regional students are accessing higher ed through CDU. So during our recent years, of course, COVID has impacted on people's engagement with higher education. And it looks as if COVID has actually benefited students and CDU in encouraging um, more students to be retained and complete. So the geography of aggregate retention and completion. So students who are retained and complete are mostly from the Northern Territory, Queensland, WA, New South Wales. So around the top part of Australia. So don't forget we're talking about at CDU. So students know what they want. So in aggregate terms, only 11% of all retained students during that time period changed courses, while 89% were retained in their originally chosen course. So we do have some course hoppers, so people who decide to start something and then, oh, you know, this really isn't for me. So more young students than middle and mature age students change courses or are retained. And women aged 20 to 39 and men aged 20 to 24 and then those aged 50 and over are most likely to change course. Um, yeah, so in uh, the first part of the project, as Tracy mentioned, was to undertake a quantitative, uh, to co uh, collect some quantitative data. We used an online Qualtrics survey, and the plan was to um, understand the experiences of First Nations students uh, and uh, their experience with higher ed at CDU to identify their needs and challenges, and also to identify ways that we could best um, or improve um, their experiences at CDU. So an invitation to participate in the survey was sent to 656 First Nations students who were enrolled at CDU in June 2022. 
Uh, the distribution was undertaken by a member of the First Nations Student Services team, so that retained their anonymity. So it was one step away from the research team. So we we were not privy to who that um, who the survey was invitation was sent to. Uh, three reminder emails were also sent out to students uh, because part of the period the survey was at was over the uh, mid semester break. Um, so we sent out reminders through July and August, and we. We got 82 initial respondents uh, who agreed to participate in the survey, which was about a 12.5% response rate. Thanks, Lani. So in terms of our responses, um, the majority of those responded were female. However, um, so 80% of the total respondents were female, but the, it was only 10% of the distribution to women responded. So whilst 20% of the distri distribution to males responded. So even though there's fewer males responding and fewer male students, there's a, the actual percentage of respondents was, was higher than women. Thanks, Lani. Uh, in terms of those uh, who responded by age, the majority of the respondents were in that 31 to 41 year age group. Um, however, Kate CDU, uh, or the data, the CDU data that Kate has also analysed actually shows that the highest number of enrolled students are actually in that 20 to 30 age group, whereas we've got uh, greater respondents to the survey in that slightly older age group, partly possibly because they've been at CDU longer and have more, more, uh, more to say or perhaps have more time to respond to, to surveys such as this. Thanks, Lani. Uh, so we, we, we got 74 total respondents uh, pretty much continual completing the, the survey. And most of those were living outside the Northern Territory. And of those that were living in the Northern Territory, by far the majority were in the greater Darwin region. Uh, sometimes students, uh, for some of the responses from students in all questions, we needed to do some recoding because they may have misunderstood the question or have actually answered the question but just in a different way. Uh, so from the recoding, again, we found that most lived in Queensland and New South Wales, uh, and more commonly, as suggested by the CDU data, in regional areas. Thanks, Lani. Uh, we also were interested to know if they'd actually undertaken any sort of pre-tertiary preparation program to find out, you know, whether that was uh, you know, a positive experience or helped them with their experience. Um, but by far the majority, um, you know, nearly 75% did not actually complete a pre-tertiary preparation program. And of those, the majority the, of those that had, the majority had completed either a preparation for tertiary access or a TEP program at CDU. Um, other places they may have undertaken those types of programs uh, were given as um, Bachelor Institute, um, Queensland TAFE and TAFE New South Wales, but by far, the majority were undertaken at CDU. And 61% of the 18 respondents who had identified, um, the, 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 they actually identified that it was actually a compulsory requirement to undertake their higher ed course, that they actually completed the pre-tertiary education program. Whereas seven respondents said they did it by choice. Thanks, Lani. In terms of the, uh, the year of commencement of study of the respondents, most of the students were in the first three years of their study, as you can see there. Thanks, Lani. And by far the most common field of education in which our First Nations students are studying in terms of the respondents was health. Even with me recoded when they weren't sure of what their field of study was, uh, it was still far and beyond uh, their, their area of study was health. Um, in terms of society and culture, that could be things like language um, or, um, yeah, but probably language is probably the most common there, but it is other courses that are offered in the, in the, uh, in the uh, College of Sifia. So why do, why do our First Nations students study at CDU? They were able to um, provide multiple responses, hence the numbers. Um, about the, uh, in regard to what made them to study at CDU. If we, we can actually group up some of these uh, responses into categories and, you know, the most uh, common reason was to be a role model for their family. 
because we I suspect when we actually get to talk to some of these students, they could be first in family at university. So um, they have uh, they're really trying to be a role model to others following. The other uh, the other group of common uh, motivations were the fact that the course was online, it was flexible and it was accessible. Doesn't surprise you, I guess, when there's large numbers of females um, undertaking courses that that is a positive option. And obviously we were teaching through COVID as well. So the ability for them to access and still continue their studies would definitely have been important online. Uh, the other motivations were related to their job, whether it was going to get a job, whether it was to get an, a, an advancement in their job or because they were supported in their job by their job to do it was another reason for them undertaking study. And uh, the other reason why they were studying at CDU was it was affordable. So there were whether there were motivations around the cost, pre, uh, the, the preference to study at CDU around cost or the, the lower cost. Thanks, Lani. We certainly understand that um, our First Nations students have many responsibilities uh, beyond what the, beyond the, those of study. Um, and again, they were able to identify multiple other responsibilities that they had. Uh, most commonly work was one. So most of our students uh, are studying and working at the same time. And the other responsibilities were around family. Quite often, um, other members of extended family or, um, or children and generally over five years old. So they're perhaps not choosing to study and or work when they've got very young children at home. But they certainly have other responsibilities that we need to consider are pressing on their time. So thanks, Tracy. I'll, I'll hand over to Gazielle. Thank you, Alessia. Thank you very much, Tracy. Thank you very much, Alicia. Uh, of course, we want to support our students, and that's why we ask them what services are best supporting. And with the students uh, identifying, of course, First Nations uh, student support area for, and city used First Nations tutorial support. And we already know that these services are working for students. But they have also identified library workshops and stuff. And to use First Nations academic support. These are the workshops that uh, First Nations uh, leadership unit is running for our students. And uh, in addition to CDU services, of course, our students, as you have seen, they're working, they have family. So we ask them what are the uh, supports except CDU uh, are helping them to study, helping them to uh, be retained by university. And they have answered that it's mostly workplace colleagues or managers, as well as their family, partner, elders, and even support club members or management and friends, of course. Thanks. As Tracy has already said, our First Nations students, more than any other students, even the successful students are thinking about living. And we wanted to support them and we asked them, what would be the reason for you to leave if you were thinking to leave? Uh, what, by far, the main answer was health or mental health issues in themselves, or caring for their own children. Difficult to concentrate after a full days of work, or unsatisfactory experience in city and inflexible workouts. So we can see this conflict between support by family and work, and at the same time, uh, certain barriers and obstacles due to extended obligations. We have also, uh, uh, we want to keep the, as Tracy said, good practice going, and we want to prepare the good guides for all our students, our First Nation students studying at CDU to, uh, uh, prepare, uh, to ensure cultural supportive environment. So we ask the, our students for advice. What advice would you give to other students who are coming after you? And you can see the answer in the next slide. Uh, uh, I will read it out for, for people. So my advice to other First Nations students is to study in a field which has interested them for some time and will lead them toward a rewarding career path. And as Tracy has presented already, 89% of them already knew what they are going to 
what field they're going into. And uh, some of them are already going for better the job, better career uh, opportunities. Another response was, I think life is what you make it. And sure, it is hard, but sometimes you need to just get on with it. And uh, another one, obviously, from the nursing student, what got me through was being able to sit down with a fellow First Nations nurse and process, reconcile the differences in white healthcare and what was expected of me versus how I felt. Having a mentor in the workplace made all the difference. So we will continue this, uh, this study, this research. And our next step, as Tracy has said, uh, students identified top lecturers, top services that helped them through the study. So what we will do, we will interview those lecturers and we will in, uh, interview to you First Nations student support and professional, uh, our professional stuff. So we can also, uh, we can collect good practices of how to uh, retain our students, engage our students better. And just to recap our presentation, our work is a team uh, led by Tracy, who was First Nations student herself at CDU. And now she's uh, working on making this path, this journey easier, better, easier, uh, more accessible, and more enjoyable for many more students, First Nations students who are going to study at CDU. Majority of our students are re uh, in remote and regional area. Majority of them are mature age students. Uh, luckily, COVID uh, was a positive influence in our retention strategy because a lot of materials are online already and we were able to accommodate students in flexibility. Uh, that was fantastic to know that main motivation for our students is to be the role model. And I think we can harness it uh, better in the future, knowing these students, they want to be role models for their community, and we would like to give them the platform to be those role models. And um, of course, uh, uh, CDU Services best supporting students were rightly so uh, First Nations leadership team, but also library and um, other uh, support services are extremely important for our First Nations students. We should never forget that uh, students do think about living and can live, but uh, we will ensure everything that we can within our team and we will share all the results on the website, as Tracy has said. And we just put one more memorable, one memorable quote from the student just to finish off this presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now I will invite Tracy for some questions or comments or anything else you wish to ask. Thank you. So if you do have a question, please feel free to ask it. If we don't have the answer, we'll find out and get back to you. Um, I just wanted to add one thing. So in conversation with our advisory group when we presented to them, um, it was highlighted for us. Maybe we thought about it already. Maybe we hadn't made it explicit. But the support that's offered to students comes in more or less two different streams. So there's pastoral care or pastoral support and academic support. So um, along with our investigations of the support that's provided and the effective support that's provided, we're also now considering those two different areas of support and how much they also play into um, the successful engagement with higher ed studies leading through to completion here at CBU. Um, so we did have Kat online, and I know that Kat has also done a lot of research about defining what success means. So, you know, does success mean the same thing for everyone? And does, you know, the Western idea of success and actually getting through to completion um, really hold true with 
everyone, including First Nations students, or do people from different cultural backgrounds and different needs or views of the world also have different ideas and understandings um, and perhaps um, understandings about the degree, so not only what is success but also the degree to which they have to actually um, complete something or complete their studies for it to feel successful to them. So knowing people's individual stories and being able to connect is relevant to what we find out in this study. It's not just about um, quantitative, it's qualitative as well that's foundational and underlies um, what we're learning. You know, people's stories, how do they feel, how does that impact? But in uh, using a mixed methods approach, we get to back up as well what we're saying and, and finding out in people's stories with the statistical data. Um, so we get to have a more rounded or more comprehensive view or understanding of um, engagement for First Nations students here at CDU.